Do you guys ever wonder how companies decide what price a product or service should be? Especially something brand new, like a product that's never existed before. How did they decide this new thing should be, say, $10? There are different ways companies can decide what price a product should be. One such way is called cost plus pricing. In a different video, I will explain why cost plus pricing is a terrible way to set price. But today, I will talk about value-based pricing, which is basically understanding what the new product is worth to the customer. And one of the most basic ways to measure what a product is worth is called the Van Westendorp analysis. Officially called the Van Westendorp Price Sensitivity Meter, PSM, it was developed by a Dutch economist, Peter Van Westendorp, in the 1970s to determine customer price preferences. When marketers are trying to decide what a product is worth to customers, they could just ask in a survey, how much do you think this product should be priced? The problem with that is that clever survey takers realize they may be in a position to decide the price of a product, so naturally they'd say something very low like a dollar for a new pair of shoes. Van Westendorp realized it, so instead of asking head-on what a product should be priced, a survey taker is asked four price-related questions. Number one, at what price would this product be so expensive that you would not consider it? Number two, at what price would this product be priced so low that you'd feel the quality is poor? Number three, at what price would this product start to get expensive that you'd still consider buying it, but you'd have to give it some thought? And number four, at what price would you feel this product is a bargain, a great buy for the money. When hundreds of survey takers answer these questions, the cumulative frequencies of two of the questions and the inverted cumulative frequencies of the other two are plotted. On the chart, there are a few points where the charted lines intersect. The first point is at a price where equal percent of the survey takers considered the price too cheap as getting a bit expensive. The second point is at a price where equal percent of the survey takers consider the price too expensive as it being a bargain. According to Van Westendorp, the range of prices between these two price points is what is called the range of acceptable prices. Now there's a third intersection. It is the price point where equal percent of the people considered it too cheap as too expensive. Van Westendorp calls this the optimal price point, or OPP. The OPP is often used by marketers as a benchmark for pricing a new product. Personally, I think it's somewhat of a poor choice of words. Yes, I am not down with OPP. There are quite a lot of flaws in the methodology. First, these are still stated responses. And as such, survey takers could potentially figure out what the marketer is after. They could easily say, these pair of shoes start to get expensive at $10, which would skew the results. Second, it completely ignores competition or any substitute. It ignores any acceptable substitutes and pricing is very sensitive to available substitutes. Van Westendorp also lacks any link to purchase probability. In other words, we can't gauge whether the prices survey takers give translate into some desire that they'd actually be interested in buying the product. In the 1990s, three economists, Newton, Miller and Smith, added two purchase intent questions after the survey takers give us two of the four price points. Using this method, we can aggregate all respondents and create a demand curve for probability of purchase at those price points. There are other suitable ways to gauge the value or worth of a product, and I will speak to those in later videos. I personally would only use the Van Westendorp if I have no starting point, virtually no idea what a new concept or invention should be priced. Then it's a great tool. Otherwise, I would use other approaches. 
Well, that's it on the Van Westerdorp analysis. I am curious what you think about it. Please leave your comments below and hit subscribe to see more market research videos. See ya.